Father, we stand in awe of who you are. We ask for your forgiveness, for your mercies and grace. We repent for every sin, transgression, and iniquity. We repent for our sins, the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Agreements with the voice of the stranger and unfulfilled vows. We ask for the washing of the blood of the Lamb upon our spirit, soul, and body, members and memories, our emotions and imaginations, and our dreams. Take us to another level, Master. Open our eyes to see you, our ears to hear you, our heart to receive. We lift our hands, Master. Oh, sweet King of glory. <laughs> Fill us tonight, Master, overflow. Yes, remove the old wineskin and put a new one on tonight. Change us, change us, change us to be more like you. To be more like you. Oh, rend the hardened heart tonight. Circumcise the heart tonight, Master. As the veil was ripped that we can go into another dimension at the temple. So rip the veil over our hardened hearts that we may access the other arena waiting for us. Jesus, help us lean not on our own understanding, but surrender all to you. And let the mind of Christ be manifested here tonight. Heal your people, Master, from torment from physical afflictions. Let the anointing break every yoke of bondage of all entanglements of fear and doubt, unbelief and religiosity. Entanglements and affairs of this world, mindsets and strongholds. That there be only one voice, one love, one truth, and one spirit. You, Master. You. Now grant us revelation and impartation that we may be about your business in true spirit and in power in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. I want to share with you a, a, a package of teachings that we recently did which will help in the transition it's called Sacrifice of Self, which is the transition between 2008 and 2009. And the teaching in the package has got Sacrifice of Self, Breaking the Bondage of Debt, Honorable Death, and Administrative Gifting. Very powerful. And I also want to encourage you to, there's another one called Cutting Loose. And it's Cutting Loose Life's Limitations. It'll help you tremendously. Turn to the book of Joel. Joel chapter 2, Joel 2, 28, Joel 2, 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and also on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. How many of y'all know it's been going on since Pentecost? And he said that there would be dreams and visions. In other words, there are, there are areas also in dreams and visions that these are thoughts or mental images experienced during sleep or while you're awake. They are mental thoughts or images by the Spirit, which is given to you in your imagination. That's why it's called image. That's why you got to keep your imagination clean. They are experienced either during your sleep or awake. They bring revelation to you of a message from God. Sometimes he's got to give it to you while you're sleeping because you ain't listening while you're awake. <laughs> Go to Psalm 19. This was specifically for the church age, known as the age of grace. 
in Psalm 19? Is everybody there? In verse 1, Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day on today utters speech and night on tonight reveals what? Knowledge. Night on tonight reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of her chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven and its circuit to the other end, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. In this arena where he's talking about, I want to call this an area, what we might call third dimensional place. We've talked about third dimensional place before, and in and, and accessing the third dimension, it's almost like a highway. And, and in this highway, it's almost like a stream, and I want to share a couple of things tonight because I, have, I had an experience, and I've had it more than once, and I had an experience while I was awake and while I was asleep. And, and, and in these experiences, God can take you anywhere in the spirit. And he's trying to bring us to another level, another dimension where we are translated in the spirit. Is everybody with me? And in this, that's why in this transition right now from 2008 to 2009, when we talked about the sacrificing of self, we must sacrifice self. We must offer ourselves up to the altar of the Lord every single day so self has no dominion. And in so doing this, 2008 was a representation of new beginnings or a representation of conception. And 2009 is a representation of birthing. We're, we're going to be birthing. There's going to be more birthing. God is going to not only birth the things that have a promise, but he's going to be birthing warriors. Is everybody with me? Warriors. And I'm not talking about wimpy warriors. I'm not talking about frady cats. I'm talking about warriors who are willing to die and dive into the river and the stream of life to go wherever God wants them to go. Where the past is killed. Are you listening? Where you're not limited by your limitations of the carnality. Where your dependence is not on talents, abilities, or bank accounts. Where your dependence is on the spirit of the living God. Go to Genesis 41. Genesis 41. In verse 25, Genesis 41, 25. Let's read this together. And starting in verse 25, then Joseph said to Pharaoh... The dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. What, who's about to do? God is about to do. Does everyone understand this? So see, some dreams will also come to you to show you what God is about to do. Like I said many times, um, if we're not looking for them, if we're not asking for dreams and visions, if, if, if we're bound up by religion, if you're clogged up, with cares and concerns of the world, you won't be able to get these dreams. The only dreams you'll get is when you eat pizza. Hello? <laughs> yeah, I had a dream, Pastor. Nice. What'd you eat last night? Pizza, hot peppers. And, yeah, can imagine. I bet you drunk you were in fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because even the things you can eat can affect your dreams. Hello. Yeah, so I was being chased by a hot dog. No. <laughs> His name was Oscar. <laughs> so... Joseph interprets a dream from Pharaoh and he says, listen, I'm telling you, God has given you this dream to show you what God is going to do. See, if everybody would get these dreams to let them know what God is going to do, we wouldn't do so many stupid things. 
That's why we always want confirmation from God. Too many people move without confirmation. When they don't get confirmation, they walk in assumption. I've seen people walk out of their ministries, all kinds of stuff, because they wouldn't wait for confirmation. You know what they, they dealt on? What they felt or what they desired. See, your desires will speak to you, and so will your feelings. Causes trouble every time. It may look good at first, but let me tell you, later on it catches up. All right, let's go to verse something, 26. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads are seven years. The dreams are one. The seven thin and ugly cows which came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty heads uh, blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. This is the thing that I, the, the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Indeed, seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt. But after them, seven years of famine will arise, and all the plenty will be what? Forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine will deplete the land. So the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following, for it will be very severe. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in seven plentiful years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Then that food shall be as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land may not perish during the famine. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Oh, this is powerful. See, so many times we are limited. The Bible tells us, a man, as a man thinks, so he is. See, the limitations are always established by the devil. He'll limit you from getting into places. He'll bind you to religiosity, tradition, and ordinances. So that you come under the arm of the flesh instead of the arm of the Lord. But I'm telling you, we've got to begin to break these limitations. The Bible says all things are possible to those who believe. And in this area, God wants to bring us into a deeper place, severing limitations. I mean limitations of everything. See, limitations are established by your thoughts. That's why the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. Remember, we talked about um, doubt and unbelief and fear being your enemy. Because they prevent you from going forward. We'll talk about that stuff later. But I just want you to understand something, that something powerful really happened here. Joseph interprets a dream that positioned him to re rescue. Hello? It, God positioned him to rescue his people. So without Joseph being able to interpret that dream, are you listening? He wouldn't have been positioned to rescue the people. Not only did he not interpret the dream, but God gave him the answer and how to overcome the famine. We should be doing this. If you have the spirit of the living God in you, the Bible tells you that the anointing teaches you all things. And that guides you in all things and you know all things. Limitations are established by religiosity. Because see, religiosity is, is established by what you know instead of who you know. Well, I've been a believer 60 years. I've been a deacon interfering with God's will for 14. I've been a deaconite. Is everybody okay? Limitations must be broke. They're established also by emotional attachments. Limitations are established by emotional attachments. 
The Bible tells us that a good soldier should not, uh, that's in warfare should not be entangled in the affairs of this world. Affairs of this world are things of your past. Things of your desires. Emotional attachments. Everything must be severed. You must have no attachment to this world. All of your attachment must be to the king. See, when everything has been severed from this world and everything's established with him, the flow is better. Has everybody got it? 1 Corinthians 2. You know, I want to share something very important. God will always test you to see what's between you and him. He wants to know whether your family is going to get in the way of your life. He wants to know whether material or whatever is going to get away in your life. You know, when my mother was dying, my wife and we took Lissy when she was a baby and we went to go see her. And we knew that her time was short. And we were here in Florida and she was in New York. And when my brother called me and said, listen, um, mom's not doing good at all. She's going to be going any moment. I said, okay. And I went to the Lord. And the Lord put on my heart, I've got work for you to do. Are you going to, which way are you going to go? And I called my brother. I said, I can't come home. But that's your mother. No. I'm a servant of the Lord. I have no family here. Does everybody understand that? He called me about four days later. Because she hadn't passed yet. And he was all freaked out. So they put the phone to my mother's ear. And I said, Mom. Jesus is waiting for you. Go home. She died two hours later. Are you listening? God will test you in every area. He wants to know whether you're really his or not. You know how many people put family functions and all that other stuff before God? Let me tell you, he'll test you anytime he can. He wants to know where your heart is. Uh, does everybody get it? And then he exposes it. See, he knows where your heart is, doesn't he? He wants to know whether you're religious or you love him. See, he's looking for those who do not want to live. He's looking for those who want to die. That sounds strange, doesn't it? Did Jesus want to die? Yes. That's what he came for, isn't it? He came to die. Because he knew what was waiting for him, didn't he? See, when you get caught up in this realm, you're constantly focused here. You're not looking. See, if, you, if, if, if you're looking through the other side, let me share something. When you're walking in the spirit, those who walk in the flesh see out of the eyes. Those who are walking in the spirit see behind the eyes. There's a difference. God wants us to no longer walk by sight, but by faith. But he wants us to see spiritually, doesn't he? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Is everybody there? Now, does the devil try to beat me up because I didn't go home? Yes. And the Lord knew that, and then he gave me a vision. Because I, I fought that. And while I was at a service one day worshiping the Lord, I saw the Lord... And my mother right next to him. And she was dressed in white and the wind was blowing. The Lord said, she's with me. And I said, thanks, Dad. And that was it. Does everybody get it? No, no, no hurt, no attachment, no nothing. Over with. And moved on. See, some people are still mourning over their family members that are dead. But they're really not dead. They're more alive than you are. Hello? <laughs> Does 
they're having a good time, and you are over here all, oh, I wish I were. Sure miss them, that's what I Oh, I wish I were. Die. Kill your past. But you don't know. He does. I don't want to know. Kill your past. If you can't kill your past, you'll never go forward. You'll be so busy trying to fight your past, you can never go forward. Now listen, um, just to clarify everything, you know, I'm not telling you not to show up at your family's funerals, all right? Well, you know, in case your family dies and you know, you're going to blame it on me that you didn't go. You got to hear from God. Just to clarify this, you know. I'll be getting calls and letters and saying that we live in a cul-de-sac and everything else. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, would you read it with me? But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit does what? Searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So who searches it? The spirit. So if you're led by the spirit, are you going to begin to search the deep things of God? Yes, because he always is, isn't he? For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Wow. That's why there are people who only know what's in the Bible. They can never go any deeper. Are you listening? They're bound by the letter. They can't go any deeper. Because they're not fellowshipping with the spirit of God. Because the spirit of God is always going to bring you deeper. Are you getting this? See, this is a door. The Bible's a door to the river that flows underneath it. <laughs> there is a river bed that flows underneath it. This is just a door. And when you get through this door, there is a river that is awesome that waits for me and you. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things are also, we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the carnal mind, the natural mind, does not receive the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And I truly believe that's why God has a way for you to pass out. Like go to sleep. Before he can speak to you. The spirit searches deep things of God. The natural man calls it foolishness. That's why night unto night knowledge is revealed. You know, every night you go to sleep, God is trying to impart something in you. But there are things that interfere with the impartation. Sin. Sin. Unconfessed sin. Pride. Pizza. You know. <laughs> Hello. Certain things can interfere. Does everybody understand? Go to John 7. Garlic. Whew. That will do it too, let me tell you. You eat enough garlic, you'd be dreaming you're rolling upstream. John 7, is everybody there? In verse 37. Also, one of the things that will prevent you from receiving certain things from God is not being a worshiper. Why? Because you're still too alive. A worshiper. People are waiting on an answer from God. They're waiting on this. They're, waiting. They're searching the word, but they haven't worshipped yet. A worship is associated with priesthood. If you're not a worshiper, the anointing is not there. Nothing but stinky religion. You must become a worshiper. The Father searches those who will worship him in truth and spirit. Oh, yes. Why? So he can get something to them. 
If God Almighty is searching for someone to worship him in truth and spirit, let me tell you, you should be worshiping like crazy. Man, I start when it's time to worship, I'm going. That's why people have so much problem in their minds when they try and worship. Because they don't worship enough. They're still caught up in the world. They haven't severed everything yet. Their focus is more on the things of the world than the things of God. A worshiper. See, the anointing breaks the yoke. The more you worship, and I'm telling you, not just come in here, clap your hands, sing a few hymns, and, and look around the room. I'm talking about going after God like you never have. Every time there's a time to worship, you should go after him. Why? Because if you go after him, he goes after you. In verse 37, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing, in other words, those following, in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So out of your heart. Now your heart is the character of your spirit. There'll be a river that flows. It's a stream of living water. Are you listening? This stream is a life changing. It's a life changing place. And it can also not only happen as you're praying in the spirit and worshiping God. But it's also a place spiritually known as a stream, a river. When we talked about third dimension, there's a place I want to talk about tonight called the dream stream. And that's what I've labeled it. It's called a dream stream. And it's a place where you and I can access he says, and out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. In other words, there is a river that's flowing that you have access to. And if you're in it, it's flowing through you too. Are you listening? Go to Ezekiel 47. Ezekiel 47. Start at verse 1. Something happened to me, and, then when I, and after it happened to me, I heard the word dream stream. I thought, Whoa. And it's a place where God wants to bring us into. In other words, you don't know, know, not only have to be led by the Spirit while you're awake, there's a place you can go while you sleep. You know, after my visitation from the Lord for almost two or three weeks, as I fell asleep, the Lord took me to all kinds of places. I was in the library of God. I was all over the place. I was taking on bridges, things that w w were, uh, he showed me 15 years ago that are happening now. All kinds of things. God wants to bring us into a place. Look at what he's doing with the prophets of the old. And even prophets now. See, there's a place where God will speak to you not only face to face, through the Spirit, but he'll speak to you in an area of dreams and visions. But he wants to be able to take you to places. Not only speak to you, but take you. And I'm telling you, I was taken for almost two weeks in all kinds of places. And that's when I first had my first visitation from the Lord. And about two weeks after that, I was taken all kinds of places. And then it was settled. I wasn't taken as many times. I was having dreams and visions and certain things. But it wasn't like being taken. Because see, when you're taken, when you're asleep, it is a, such a reality. You are there. Did anybody ever hear of deja vu? See, deja vu is actually a dream that you had, but you can't remember it. So you think you were there, but you actually were there. So you just couldn't remember the dream. So when it occurs, it's like, oh, my God, I, I was there. I, I, don't, I was there. Yeah, you were. You were taken in a dream and you were brought there. But you can't remember. As a matter of fact, sometimes it can be over and over and over. You know why? Sometimes you'll have the dream that you were taken. You'll have the dream that you were taken because you're in the dream that you dreamt that you were taken. Are you listening? So it feels like you've been there two or three times already. 
So you be dreaming that you're dreaming that you were taken. Are you, are, are you getting this? And you'll wake up in the dream going, wow. And then you wake up from there going, whoa. <laughs> Window of opportunity. Ezekiel 47, in verse 1. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple. Now Ezekiel was taken. This was either a vision or a dream. And it was, he brought me, the Lord brought me back to the door of the temple and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the front of the temple faced east and the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple south of the altar. And I want to share something quickly. The Bible says that Jesus was pierced in the side. The same place that Jesus was pierced in the side is the same place where the Lord put Adam to sleep and took the rib out. Are you listening? Those are associated with birthing. That's why the Spirit is sharing this with us now. Because 2009 will be associated with what? Birthing. So you see that there's going to be things birthed by the Spirit. And some of these things are going to be uh, birthing by the area of entering the dream stream so that we can have access to things. Are you listening? So uh, from the temple, there was a river that was coming from the temple. And it was coming from the right side. Does everybody got this? And that's where Jesus was pierced. And the Bible tells us that out of his, that's where you and I were birthed was when Jesus was pierced. The same place, that, that's where the church was birthed, where Jesus was pierced. The bride was birthed from Adam. The church was birthed from Jesus. Has everybody got it? Okay, let's go on. And he brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gate, gateway that faces east, and there was water running out of the right side. And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits, and he brought me through the waters, the water came up to my ankles. See, now, it depends how deep you want to go. And again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters. The water came up to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the water, and it came up to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross. For the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim. A river that could not be crossed. And he said to me, son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. When I returned, there along the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and on the other. And he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region goes down into the valley and enters into the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. Then it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, will live. What river is that? The river of God. See, there's a river that flows from the throne room of God. It's a third dimensional place where you and I have access to when we're awake or when we're asleep. It's called being led by the Spirit. See, when you're being led by the Spirit, I want you to begin to look about being in a river. You're being in a flow. You're in a flow when you're led by the Spirit. You're in the river of life. You're in the river of God. When you're asleep, you're in a dream stream. And when you're awake, you're in the river. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, whether wherever the river goes, will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish. Hallelujah. That's rescue. Because these waters go there, for they will be healed, and everything will live wherever the river goes. See, this is when you exit this place, God will translate you to different places. Either in the spirit, physically, or while you sleep in the stream, in the dream stream. Is everybody okay? Go to Psalm 78. 
Psalm 78. Psalm 78, verse 10. Let's start at verse 12. Marvelous things he did in the sight of their fathers. In the land of Egypt, in the field of Zon. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through. He made the water stand up like a heap. In the daytime also he led them with the cloud and at night with the light fire. He split the rocks in the wilderness and he gave them drink in the abundance like the depths. He also brought what? Streams out of the rock. Who's known as the rock? Jesus. He brought streams out of the rock and caused waters to run down like what? Rivers. Do you understand this? See, he showed this in the Old Testament. When they were out in the wilderness, they were looking for life. They needed a drink. The Lord told Moses, go over there and hit that rock. He hit the rock. Water came out. It was a fun. Now you got to remember, you got a couple million people there. It wasn't a trinkle. It was an abundance. <laughs> Water came flying out of this place. And then they went to another place and they kept going and, and, and the people complained again that they were thirsty. They wanted to get in the river. The Lord told Moses, go there and speak to the rock because the word spirit is a representation of breath. Because he was talking about a new covenant that would come, that would be the covenant through the spirit. It would be the ministry of the spirit instead of the ministry of ordinances. And Moses went and he got all angry and got caught up in the flesh. Instead of speaking to the rock to get the water flow, he hid it. And it prevented him from getting in the promised land because of his disobedience. So we see here, the streams come out of the rock. The water runs down like a river. It's a representation of the move of the Spirit. Go to Psalm 46. You know, one of the areas I want to share with you also is that you must be a broken vessel. Are you listening? I'm talking about broken to be able to flow in the river. Pride will reject you. Psalm 46 in verse 4. Let's read it together. There is a what? River whose streams shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. In other words, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city. Why? Because it comes from the city. In other words, you and I have access to this river, don't we? It's a realm of the spirit. Spiritual river that flows. Go to Isaiah 33. Isaiah 33. In verse 21. Ooh. Nice. Let's start at verse 20. Look upon Zion, the city of our appointed feast. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a quiet home, a tabernacle that will not be taken down. Not one of its stakes shall ever be removed, nor shall any of its cords be broken. But there the majestic Lord will be for us a place of what? Broad rivers and what? Streams in which no galley with oars will sail nor majestic ships pass by. Wow, it's called the dream stream. <laughs> I'm calling it the what? Dream stream. Hallelujah. Now let me share with you a couple quick things. First, go. let's go to Acts 8. Acts chapter 8. 
in verse 26. 826. Would you read it with me? Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from the Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and he went, and behold, a man of uh, Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who he had charge of all her treasury, and he had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you are reading? Now you got to remember the spirit said, go to him and overtake him. So who helped him run? He, you got to remember this dude was on a chariot. Hello? Philip didn't have a Harley. He had to run mighty quick to catch up to that chariot. And the only way that was going to happen is if the Spirit took him there. Do you understand what you're reading? So Philip said. And the guy re returned and said, how can I understand someone unless someone guides me? And, and he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. And then the, scripture, the place in the Scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? And of himself or of some other man? And Philip opened his mouth and beginning at the scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with all of your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. So that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So they were in water, right? And what happened? The spirit came and what? Took him, and he ended up somewhere else to preach somewhere else. Are you listening to this? See, not only was this done physically, but it's done in dreams. Is everybody okay? Are you, are you seeing this? This is the word of God. This is not a fantasy. This is a reality. This is truth. The word is true. Is everybody okay? So Philip was taken. He was moved in the spirit and brought to another place. Listen, um, quite a few years ago, not that quite a few, but enough. One day I was praying. And uh, I began, I was praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit. And, and all of a sudden I found myself. I was I, I was looking through something, and I realized I was looking through eyes of a bird. And where the bird was sitting in in the tree, it was almost like a pine tree or something, and it was in in a bunch, like like a little. Uh, it was a field. I couldn't tell how big or whatever, but I saw the trees. And the next thing I saw was a girl with light brown, curly, long hair. She had a, a jump, denim jumpsuit on, and she had a, 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 like a light sweater on with a collar. And she come running by. And when she ran by, she stopped and she looked behind her, and a, a, a man came up that had dirty blonde hair with a beard and slapped her. And I began to intercede. In other words, I was seeing what was going on. And the man got frightened because either he heard or something, but he knew somebody was there. And he looked and he ran. And the girl got up. Now, I was in prayer. And the next thing I know, then I was realized that I was back praying again. 
And about oh, months later, I saw that girl in church. But I didn't say anything. I'm thinking, whoa. And, and I didn't want to approach her. I, just, you know, I, just, you know, I was like, okay. You know. So I just let it be. Now, that was while I was awake praying. Then, short, or then about a week or two ago, I was in a dream, and I dreamt that I was in a room, and there was a hallway, and there was a person that was there, and they were about to do something. And I knew that what they were about to do was going to hurt their life. So the person was getting ready to leave the room, and I grabbed that person's arm. And I said, don't go there. Don't do it. And I woke up. So I began to intercede and pray. I don't know, it was about 3 or 4 in the morning. And I realized who the person was. And I communicated with somebody that knew this person, because I don't want to mention any names. And that person communicated who I had the dream with and gave testimony and called me up and said, listen, I was at a such and such place and I was getting ready to go into this place and I heard a voice say to me, don't do that. Don't go there. And that person turned around and didn't go into that place. That If that person would have gone in that place, that person's life would have been changed. There would have been something that happened to that person that I wish they would have never gone into that place. And this person called me and couldn't believe it and heard the exact same words that I spoke. See, because there is a place in the spirit where God can bring you to. Why, even while you're sleeping, that's why I called it. When I woke up, I heard dream stream. I'm thinking, dream stream. That's a place where God wants to bring us. In other words, he can translate you anywhere in a dream where you're actually there in spirit. And what you say, they'll hear. Now, that person was there physically. Hello? But I was there in the spirit, and that person heard me. Are you listening? This is what God wants to start doing. This is how we're going to enter the enemy's camp. This is how all the people are going to get rescued. There's going to be a huge harvest just through that alone. Okay? Is everybody all right? I mean, there's more, but I ain't getting all in this. I want to just share with you. I want to... Because I want to confirm some things with you in the word. Nothing is impossible to those who believe. Go to 2 Corinthians 12. You know, by hearing some of these things, it will give us a desire or a hunger to want to access these things. Remember when Paul went up to the upper regions, right? And he ran into people and he said, hey, did you get baptized in the Holy Ghost when you received Jesus? And they said, man, we didn't even know there was a Holy Ghost. He said, well, that's what I'm here for. So they would have never been baptized in the Holy Ghost unless somebody told them. That's why we're hearing this now. God is trying to bring us to another place. A deeper place. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. It's about a love affair. It's about being led by the Spirit of God. It's about denying yourself on a daily basis. And 2 Corinthians chapter 12, is everybody there? In verse 1. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I don't know. God knows such a one was caught up to where? Glorious. He doesn't know whether he was in the body or out of the body. It didn't care to him. He was caught up. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows how he was caught up into the paradise. Heard expressible, inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. In other words, he couldn't get it. It was too overwhelming to him. His carnal mind could not understand it. He couldn't comprehend it. Does everybody understand it? As such a one, I will boast yet of myself. I will not boast except for my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not 
be a fool, for I will speak of the truth, but I refrain lest anyone should think of me above uh, he sees me to be or hears of me. In other words, it's available for everybody. This has got nothing to do with an individual. But like I shared with you, there are things that block us, isn't there? That's why the Bible says to judge yourself. Come out from among the world. Touch nothing unclean. There's areas where God will reveal himself to things that are clean. You know, you wonder why God does things with other people and not with others. Well, there's a reason for that. It doesn't make that person better. It's that that person is willing to do whatever it takes to stay more separated unto God. More of a pure heart. It doesn't make them better, though, does it? Dreams of vision, a place called paradise, right in the spirit. I love it. Revelation 22. In verse 1, Revelation 22. And he showed me a what? A pure river of water of life. A pure river of the water of life. Clear as crystal proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its streets and on either side of the river was a tree of life which bore twelve fruits. And each fruit yielded its fruit every month. The leaves were the tree were from uh, the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Now I want you to know that this is, at a, there is a true place of this place right now. Spiritually. Has everybody got it? There is a place of this right now. It's already existing. And you and I can access this place in the river. But one day, soon, it's going to be coming forth for all men to see. But you ain't going to see this unless you're right. <laughs> you may pass by it, <laughs> but you ain't drinking from the river unless you're right with God and your name stays in the book of life. Is everybody okay? It's the eternal river and the spirit that will become physical. Glory. Second Corinthians 4. Second Corinthians 4. Verse 16. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment for some of us, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are what? seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are what temporary but the things which are not seen are what they're eternal oh hallelujah see so the things that are not seen should become more of a reality to you than the things that are seen you know people get in arguments with one another then they blame one another but they really don't see that it's the unseen that's causing the problem. Hello. The Bible says make no place for the devil. Well, hello. It's not your boss. It's not your spouse. It's you. <laughs> hello. It's you. You're either allowing the devil access. Or you're shutting the door. You're either relying on what you see. Or the reality of what you don't see. Because what you see is temporary and what you don't see is eternal. So it's our responsibility to make the unseen seen. And it's by getting in the spirit. Is everybody okay? You know, oh, love this. Go to Acts 12. Acts chapter 12. Doesn't the Bible say that we're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places? Well, if you're blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, there is a place that, that you have access to. You are blessed with every blessing in heavenly places. Wow. In other words, you have access anywhere. You know what? Majority don't even tap into it. See, it's our responsibility to tap into that river. See, we're so busy fighting on the banks, we're not willing to get in. 
See, we're so caught up in self, don't even realize how much caught up in self we are. Self hangs out in the bank, not in the river. Acts chapter 12 and verse 5. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping. He was what? He was sleeping. Bound with two chains between two soldiers. And the guards before the door were keeping the prison. I mean, he was like locked in. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone on the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off of his hands. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. And so he went out and followed him and did not know that what was done by the angel was real. See, he thought he was dreaming. <laughs> Are you listening? Man, the angel brought him in the dream stream, let me tell you. <laughs> but thought he was seeing a what? Vision. He didn't believe this was really happening. And when they were past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. Now, you got to understand that these things are what you might see in movies. So Peter, Peter didn't watch any movies. So to Peter, this was just a dream. He didn't think that this was a reality. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, whoa. Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent this angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. So when he considered this, he came to the house of Mary and so forth. So he came to his senses. He woke. In other words, he thought he was dreaming because he was brought into another realm. Do you understand that? The dream stream. <laughs> the angel came and took him. Nobody could see. Come on, he was chained between two guards. And then he was locked in with other guards right out there. They didn't even know what happened. Come on. That's called in the spirit. <laughs> and the Bible says we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. Now look at that happened to Peter there, right? But I want to share with you what happened to him prior to that. They were on a boat, and they were in the middle of the sea, and it was all tossing and turning and this and that and whatever, and all of a sudden they saw Jesus walking on water. Now, there used to be a, a uh, fable that said if they saw a ghost walking on water, it means their ship was going to sink and they were going to die. So they saw this ghost to them walking on water, and they were all freaked out. We're going to die that minute. And as they got closer, Jesus said, hey, it's me. Be of good cheer. It's okay. And all of them freaked out. And they were all like, whoa. Now, Peter was the only one. He saw Jesus walking on water. Man, if he can do that, why can't I? See, Peter's limitations just fell. Every limitation was removed when he saw Jesus walking on water. He probably thought in his head, man. He said, Lord. She said, Peter. He said, uh, can, 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 I, can I do that? He said, come. Peter got out of the boat. Ooh. He walked, walked, started getting closer to the Lord. All of a sudden, the wind took up, picked up, picked quickly. Oh, Peter. His limitations were now reestablished. And he began to sing, go, Lord, Lord. And Jesus grabbed him and said, Ah, oh, you bonehead. <laughs> have you no faith? You have little faith. And he helped get him in the boat and they all worshiped the Lord. But see, I, I want to share with you that first of all, Peter walked on the water. There was no limitations. And then he got in the stream and walked out of the prison. 
to, he was able to fulfill what he couldn't do the first time. <laughs> Everybody got it? See, the limitations will prevent us. We must start severing these limitations so that we can walk more in the Spirit. You know, the Bible says that if we do not warfare, our warfare is not carnal, but it's mighty in pulling down strongholds. Well, how are we going to warfare without getting in the Spirit? You know, people are trying to warfare in the flesh. It ain't going to work. Your warfare can only be successful by being in the Spirit. Does everybody understand that? Let's close it, Romans 8. I've got more, but I think this is sufficient. Romans chapter 8. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? You're going to start seeking for it. Start asking for it. Lord, take me tonight. What do you want me to do? Romans chapter 8. Would you start at verse 5? Yeah. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if you're not spiritually minded, you're not walking in peace. The only reason why you're tormented is because you're still attached to the world. Because the carnal mind is empty against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if. That word if is important. The deed, the spirit of God dwells in you. In other words, if you're being led by the spirit. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. That's what God is raising up. Warriors. Third dimensional warriors. Sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. That means you have access to all things. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ because you're blessed with every spiritual blessing and you are seated in heavenly places. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. See, God will begin to use you and grant you access into this arena to warfare, to rescue. See, our What's happening right now, it's a time, there's a huge harvest going on. Did you know the Lord is appearing to all kinds of people all over the place? I don't know if you've heard about the uh, Hamas, um, one of the main leaders of Hamas, son, became a believer. He was in prison. And when he was in prison, he saw what the Hamas people did to each other. He said, wait a minute. This is, this, we're supposed to have, we're supposed to believe in a God, but these people are torturing their own people. And he came out of prison. They released him. And he ran into a, a guy who introduced Jesus to him. And for two years, this guy compared the Bible to the, um, what do you call it, the Quran? Quran? Crayon? <laughs> and he said something about the Quran. He said after he began, for, he took him two years and he studied it thoroughly. He said after he studied the Quran, he said it's nothing but a bipolar book. I thought, whoa. He says it contradicts itself everywhere. He said the one thing that struck him the most is when he read the scripture that says, love your enemy. 
because he had never heard of loving. The only thing he knew of was hatred. And when he read the scripture that Jesus said, love your enemy, he accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He came to this country. He got involved in a church, and the church is providing for him where he's staying, feeding him, clothing and shelter, because he knows he's a dead man because they're out to kill him. Now he's gotten with the FBI and shared all this stuff, and now he's out trying to rescue those who are bound by Islam and telling them that they've been lied to, that their Quran is nothing but a lie, and it's a book of bipolar. <laughs> It will bring you disease. He said the things that he saw was incredible. He couldn't believe it. And he had a conversation with his father. And he said to his dad, you're closer to Christianity than you realize. But he has had to forsake everything. But let me tell you something. What God can use that man now. You know how many souls can be rescued? He's been on the news for the last couple nights. They've done uh, interviews with him. It's been powerful. I mean, I was just so blessed when I saw this. And it's just amazing, you know, how the Lord just works, you know. So he was in Israel for two years. And he got saved. And he said he just took two years, just him and the, him and the Lord, and compared the Quran with the Bible. But the thing that affected him the most was when he saw the Lord say, love your enemies. And he never heard that. He got saved and he's serving the Lord now. Is that powerful? You know, but think about what he had to go through. We didn't have to go through nearly any of that. This man was in prison for almost two years and saw the things. And his father was the head guy there. He said, nothing gets done without governmental approval. He said the whole purpose is not peace for Palestine. It's to overcome the world. That everybody becomes a slave to them. That's their purpose. They have no concern of Palestinians. They have no concern of anything. They just want to rule the world. That's it. Under a demon. Well, they're in for a big surprise. Amen? Amen? Listen, can you imagine getting in the dream stream and going to Iran or Iraq? You don't even know where you are and go and rescue somebody. <laughs> you could go somewhere into a prison. You don't know. I'm not talking about astral projecting, okay? I'm talking about the spirit of the living God taking you. Not you doing it by witchcraft. I'm talking about the living God coming to take you while you sleep and bring you to a place. To rescue someone. See, you don't even know it. You just think you're dreaming it. Then when you wake up, you go, oh, it was a dream. Cool, yeah. I mean, I was there. I saw it. I know it. You know, and, and then you pray, and then all of a sudden you find out you were actually there. That's awesome. They did it. It's still happening. I mean, there are testimonies of missionaries who had to walk across water, who have had to been translated from one place to another. It's still happening now. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But see, the limitations that we've attached us to prevent us from moving into these areas. That's why you cannot allow our environment to establish who we are. Your environment should be now the presence of the living God to establish who you are. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray the blood of Jesus upon the seed that has been imparted tonight. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you'll visit us in dreams and visions and take us to the deep things of you. Take us, Lord. Show us. Show us, Lord. We want to fight on behalf. We want to rescue and we want to take territory for the kingdom of God. Show us, Lord, and grant us access to the dream stream and in a river of the living God by your spirit in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed.